Hello fellow pilots and welcome. Today we're going to learn how real pilots fly the VFR traffic pattern. Um, I'm an instructor in real life. I've got about 500 hours in the Cessna Skyhawk and I want to teach you how to use Flight Simulator for real life training. So if ever you want to go out and learn how to fly a real Skyhawk in real life, these videos are going to show you everything that you need to know. So today the traffic pattern is one of the most basic maneuvers but it's got a lot to it. So today we're going to go over everything from radio radio calls, to uh, rotation speeds, to engine RPMs, everything that you're going to need so when you transition to real life training, hopefully you'll have learned everything you need here and so you can save yourself some time and money and some heartache uh, with the, the challenges of training. So here we are on runway 36 at Lansing. I'm going to turn off the parking brake. I'm going to assume that you already know how to turn on your airplane, how to do a run up, a pre-flight check and everything like that. And uh, let's just get flying the pattern. Start by uh, rolling straight ahead at full power. I'm going to rotate, pull back slowly at 55 knots. We're going to climb out at about 80 until we get to 1,000 feet above the ground. Here on the ground, we're at about 16, correction, 620 feet above mean sea level. And we're going to fly about 1,000 feet above us. That's standard for pattern altitude. Okay, here we go. First radio call. Lansing traffic, Cessna Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra, departing runway 36, left closed traffic, Lansing. Here we go, check for traffic out there. I'm going to put throttle in slowly, about three seconds to full power because you don't want to be too rough on the engine. And as I do that, I'm adding right foot because you've got these left turning tendencies that most pilots forget to compensate for. So my right foot is on, I'm tracking the center line. Now have full power, that's about 2300 RPM. And I'm going to give a quick glance down to my instruments, make sure everything's in the green so we're good to fly. I got distracted. Whoops, don't look down too long. Here comes 50 knots. Here comes 55 knots. And I'm going to rotate at 55. Climb out at 80 knots. In this case, I tell my students to put the cowling of the airplane right on the horizon, which gives about 76 knots, which is about the best rate of climb speed in this particular airplane. If I go a little too too fast like I am, that means I need to raise the nose a little bit up. I'm not going to talk about trim too much, but I am going to give it just a little bit of trim nose up to make my job a little easier. You want to trim off those control pressures. That was too much trim. All right, if ever you're bored in an airplane, there's something that you should and uh, could and should be doing, which is always checking for traffic. Check those engine instruments. Always be looking around. Be thinking ahead. Plan for the weather ahead. So my airspeed's a little too low, and that's because I pulled the nose up a little too high. So I'm going to drop the nose to, like I said, the nose should be right on the cowling. And we're just now passing about 650 feet above ground. And when I get to 300 feet within pattern altitude, I'm going to turn crosswind. So check for traffic. No traffic over there. No traffic over there. I do not need to make a radio call to turn crosswind. I hear a lot of pilots on frequency thinking that they need to report crosswind. Uh, according to the FAA, that is not a call that you need to make. And that's a 90 degree turn, and sure enough, here we are almost perfectly at pattern altitude. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throttle back to about 2100 in this airplane. You can see, throttling back to about 2100 RPM, right around there. And now I'm perfectly at pattern altitude, 1600 feet, ready to turn downwind. Check for traffic, and now you do make a radio call here. Lansing traffic, Cessna Alpha, Sierra, X-Ray, Golf Sierra, downwind, runway 36, Lansing. Checking for traffic as I'm coming around, checking my airspeed and altitude, making small changes as I need to. The traffic pattern really does have a little bit of everything. You need to do engine management, you need to be looking out for traffic, you need to be making lots of throttle changes, a little bit of trim. It's really a good exercise for real life tri flight training. When you first go solo as a real pilot, you'll likely fly the traffic pattern three times to practice the landings like this. Just like the, uh, the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 tutorial says, you'll know that you're on a good traffic pattern downwind because that runway is going to bisect your strut. You can see I'm a little far out. I try to keep it between a mile and a half mile. The idea is that if I needed to land, I could glide to that runway really easy, easily. 
Also, using this as an opportunity to check for traffic, make sure nobody else is in the traffic pattern. I'm listening for any other radio calls. Everything's looking pretty good. All right, at midfield downwind, if I had carburetor heat, this is where I would turn on carburetor heat, but this airplane doesn't have carburetor heat. And now I'm almost a beam the touchdown. Perfect. This is my chance to slow down to about 1500 RPM here. So I'm throttling back to 15. I'm going to hold my altitude because my target approach speed is between 70 knots and 80 knots. So I'm going to hold it up until I get around there. And here I like to put in 10 degrees of flaps. So I put in my first flaps. Check for traffic. I'm at 80 knots. Time to make a radio call. Lansing traffic. Cessna. Alpha, Sierra, X-Ray, Golf, Sierra, left base, runway 36, Lansing. Need to use just a little bit of rudder co coordination because these are the critical turns here. You want to make sure that the airplane is well above stall speed, which is indicated by the bottom of the green and the bottom of the white arcs there. If you stall here, you might not have enough al at altitude to recover, and it can be very critical. I always watch my students like a hawk right here, because these are the critical uh, these are the critical turns. All right, here we are on base. I'm going to put on another 10 degrees flaps. We're at 20 degrees, and we're about 400 feet above ground. Time to turn final. Lansing traffic, Skyhawk Alpha, Sierra, X-Ray, Golf, Sierra. Turning final, runway 36, full stop, Lansing. Looking good. Now, if I do this right, I should be approaching at about 70 knots, and the runway should not be slipping up or down in my windscreen. It's not slipping down like this, it's not slipping up like this. The numbers should basically be steady, which means I am ready to, uh, to basically fly uh, um, you know, an approach path to that point. Put in my last flaps. I'm going to try to cross the fence at about 60 knots and then just fly the airplane down, holding it about a foot or two above the runway. So a little bit of back pressure as I slowly pull back on the throttle to idle, hold it, and now my feet come alive as I start tracking down. Don't need to really slam on the brakes, but I can put on a little bit of brake here, keeping us on the center line, and I don't touch anything until I'm clear of the runway, because this is a critical time. You don't want to hit anything or anyone. Take a left turn. You can see that little hold short line straight ahead. I'm not going to make a radio call or touch anything until I'm completely clear of that hold short line. Now I'm clear. Lansing traffic, Cessna Alpha, Sierra, X-Ray, Golf Sierra, clear of runway 36, Lansing. All right, get back on the center line. Time to reset my trim, pull those flaps back up, and I'm ready to do it all over again. Okay, fellow pilots, I hope that was helpful to you. I'm going to try to make a couple more of these videos so you can use Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 to help you with your real-life flight training. Fly safely.